Consumers are now armed with smartphones, with tablets, with laptops, PCs plugged into broadband email and ubiquitous Google. We need to rethink how we as a community, as business operators, do business because the mobile phone is often now the first and main means of digital engagement, in, particularly in developing nations. Australia's trade in the region has been largely characterised by resources, agriculture and consumer goods, but we are also now increasingly a very strong services economy. Digital technologies will enable greater engagement in knowledge industries, in health and in educational services. We've firmed up our digital economy strategy through the Digital Economy White Paper and, of course, we have in the Asia-Pacific Asia region a great many countries which have world-leading digital economies, notably South Korea, Singapore, Hong Kong. With the National Broadband Network that the government has now started, we will have the world-class digital infrastructure that's necessary to unlock trading opportunities, to foster innovation, to create investment opportunities, and help build networks of individuals and businesses. Australia is a nation which has a very long culture of early adoption of technology, particularly communications technology. Australia, I can say, has also had a very long history of involvement in leading edge innovation and research. We can say that Australia is the fifth largest ICT market in Asia, it's also one of the fastest growing. Just to give you some statistics, in the decade to 2013, Australia's ICT spending was forecast to grow at the second highest rate in the Asian region, ahead of Singapore, ahead of South Korea, ahead of Japan, ahead of Taiwan. Australia is a leading location for ICT R&D capabilities, underpinned by quality research infrastructure and a highly skilled and innovative workforce. It's contributed to many globally significant commercial technology innovations, I'll list just a few, uh, electronic funds point of sale, of course, uh, gigabit wireless, which is the world first transceiver integrated on a single chip that operates at 60 gigahertz on the CMOS process and will allow wireless transfer of audio and video at 10 times the current maximum wireless transfer rate and at one tenth the cost. The mobile location center, another world first, is capable of pinpointing a mobile subscriber's geographic location in real time to assist emergency services. We have international businesses like Canon, IBM, long innovating and collaborating with Australian research industry institutes, uh, with many international organisations choosing to locate R&D facilities in Australia to deliver solutions to the region and to the world. I can give some examples. IBM's Global R&D Lab in Australia is a new to the company innovation centre which combines research and development single organisation. The uh, Canons uh, Information Research uh, System, Information Systems Research Facility in Australia is one of the largest R&D centres that the company has outside Japan. It's developing advanced technology solutions, primarily in the digital imaging domain. Bell Labs is part of the innovation engine behind Alcatel Lucent and has partnered with the University of Melbourne to establish the Centre for Energy Efficient Telecommunications, one of the largest research efforts on energy efficient telecommunications in the world. And I should mention Boeing, which has its largest R&D footprint outside the US in Australia. Australia also boasts world-class national ICT infrastructure that's critical for technology research, information networks including backhaul and well-established research institutions like the Commonwealth Scientific and Industrial Research Organisation, CSIRO, and the National ICT Australian Vector. Our new R&D tax incentive, I should mention, provide, because it provides further incentive including for foreign companies to undertake research in Australia. And the last point I'd mention, and hear more about it from uh, those participating in the discussion later tonight, it's the Australia in the Asian Century 
Asian Century White Paper, recently released by the Federal Government. It's a paper that recognises the significance of Asia to Australia as the world's largest producer of goods and services and also the world's largest consumer of them. With growing economic ties to Asia, we have an opportunity to build stronger relationships across the region, including through closer educational, cultural and people-to-people -people links. And that's the message of this Asia in the Asian, Australia in the Asian Century White Paper. I expect that these links with Asia will be deeper and broader over the years, and at the same time, Australia will become more prosperous, more resilient, and as a nation, will be more fully integrated with our region. Now, the background information for tonight refers to the Asia Pacific's 4.2 billion people, almost half the population of the globe. As we've heard from the speakers at the other uh, G'day at USA events that I've been at, hundreds of millions of those uh, living in Asia will join the middle class in the next decade. It's a fact that the Asia Pacific region will be responsible for around 35% of global GDP. It makes it the largest potential market for commerce and of particular interest to many of those here tonight for e-commerce. Over the past 50 years, Australia's trade with Asia as a share of our total trade has risen dramatically. And today, 10 of Australia's top 12 export markets are in Asia. Our challenge is to ensure that we can continue to grow trade in the Asia Pacific. And to do this, we depend on choice, not chance. All nations and businesses need to respond to the rapid changes occurring to capture captivate consumers. I think the challenge for all economies that want to engage in the digital economy is to ensure that while we're engaging through existing technologies and techniques, we also remain sufficiently agile to adapt and to grow as the digital economic landscape continues to evolve. Uh, I look forward very much uh, to the discussions tonight and I hope that some of those introductory remarks set the same for those discussions. Thank you.